Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Animesh Singh. I'm part of IBM Cloud team, and I've been working on Cloud Foundry and OpenStack over the last two years. And very recently, we have started working on Docker as well. So today, we are going to talk about Docker, Cloud Foundry, and OpenStack, the three leading technologies in the open source cloud uh, world, and how do they all come together. So there was a recent study uh, which was done by Chris Research. And as part of that, if you see the top 15 technologies, OpenStack, Cloud Foundry, and Docker actually sit in top five. Now, within IBM, we have a commitment towards open source cloud technologies. At all layers, our cloud is being built on top of open source technologies, be it at the infrastructure as a service layer, with OpenStack, Open Daylight, OSLC, or at the platform as a service layer, with Cloud Foundry, MQTT, Node.js, etc. Now, where does Docker fit into this? Is it infrastructure as a service, or is it platform as a service? Let's figure out as we go along. Let's talk very quickly about OpenStack. We all are here for the summit, uh, and we know that it's a very well-integrated collection of IIS modules, for example, compute, uh, networking or neutron component, Swift for object storage, Cinder for block storage, etc. Now let's talk about the platform as a service component, or Cloud Foundry. So what it is? So it's an open source platform as a service, which means that if you're building tools and technologies for Cloud Foundry, you are not getting into any vendor lock-ins. You can easily port them across. It meets all the developer's needs from a public platform as a service. You can go with your application, and it's smart enough to detect what runtimes you need. And as you tell what services you need, it actually binds and provisions your applications. And last but not the least, it has a very strong and vibrant community. More than 700,000 lines of code have been written, and around 1,200 contributors across different companies like IBM, Pivotal, HP, etc., are contributing to it. How is the user interaction with respect to Cloud Foundry? So you can interact with Cloud Foundry using a CLI, using an Eclipse ID, or a browser. And under the covers, it executes a command called CF push, which is actually pushing your application to Cloud Foundry. And once it's up and running, you can actually access it through your browser. Now what's happening under the covers? As you uh, push your application, it hits Cloud Controller, which is the heart and brain of Cloud Foundry deployment, and it actually manages the life cycle of your applications. Now, your applications are actually going on top of VM pools, which in the Cloud Foundry parlance are called uh, droplet execution agent or DEA pools. As you push your application, Cloud Controller actually wraps it with the appropriate runtime and the framework. For example, if it's a Java application, it's packaged with the Java or J2E runtime and framework, and then it's deployed in modern containers. And once the application is up and running, the router, the Cloud Foundry router component actually gives you a URL, which you can access through your browser. Now, what monitors the health of all these things if the applications are up, are they going down? So there is a component called Health Manager, which actually keeps on polling if your applications are up and running. And as, as it does this, it actually relies on a NATS-based messaging queue to make sure that it has a very distributed view of the whole uh, Cloud Foundry deployment. Now let's move on to Docker. As we all hopefully would have heard and know that it's one of the most disruptive technologies from the open source industry which has come in the recent past. Every significant vendor, be it IBM, Red Hat, Google, AWS, they have announced some form of support for Docker. And the first ever Docker conference was a huge success with around 1,000 attendees. Now, what is Docker? So Docker is a tool to actually run your applications inside Linux containers. It's also a tool to package your applications using Docker files. And last but not the least, also to dis distribute your applications using Docker registries or Docker hubs. Let's take a high-level overview of the Docker architecture. 
So Docker has a client server architecture. There is a Docker client which actually talks to a Docker daemon either through HTTP calls or through a socket. Now the Docker daemon actually does the heavy lifting of all the jobs in terms of bringing up your containers, running them, managing their life cycle. All the heavy lifting is being done by Docker daemon. <coughs> What's actually inside a container? Well, it's a connection of operating system, user added files, and some metadata. So Docker essentially layers out a read-write file system on top of a read-only file system. It uses technologies like namespaces to isolate the process in which your con container will run, control groups to actually allocate resources, for example, CPU, memory, disk, etc., and a union file system technology to create a layered file system. What's the difference between Docker container and virtual machines? Well, when you are actually creating containers, you are only packaging your application's files, which can only be just 10 MBs or 20 MBs, et cetera. But with virtual machines, you are actually repackaging the whole operating system again and again. So this way, it's very lightweight. And if you take a look at the performance, I mean, CPU performance is actually equivalent to the native performance of, of the machine on which it is running. Memory and network, there are little overheads but the kind of benefits we get in terms of getting a lightweight base image, which can be spawned up in seconds or sometimes milliseconds. Plus, even applications can share some of the libraries and binaries between different Docker containers. So how do Docker and OpenStack intersect? So Docker, so there is a Nova driver for OpenStack, which actually allows you to spin up Docker containers on top of OpenStack. All you need to do is change some configuration files, install Docker, and then you need to restart your Nova compute component. And once it's restarted, you can actually interact with OpenStack Nova APIs to provision Docker containers. It embeds a tiny HTTP client, which actually talks to the Docker daemon, and then provisions your containers. Docker images are actually exported in Glance, either by proxying through a Docker registry, or you can run a single command if you have created your own image to actually upload Docker images inside Glance. And it's very, very well integrated with the UI. <coughs> but that's not the only mechanism to actually provision Docker containers inside OpenStack. There is a heat template plugin for OpenStack, uh, which actually allows you to provision Docker containers. And the advantage we get with this is that you can actually provision multiple containers together, you can link them which is not possible uh, with just the Nova driver uh, for Docker. It actually also allows you to call Docker APIs directly from the Docker Heat plugin. So you're not actually going through OpenStack Nova APIs. You're able to orchestrate all the things calling directly Docker APIs. And as you can see in the sample manifest, Heat manifest there, or Heat template there, you're gonna actually add a lot more containers under the My Docker Container section to scale it out. And again, this is very well integrated with the Horizon UI. The way you actually interact with heat templates in OpenStack, it's the same mechanism there. Okay, so we talked about Docker and OpenStack, how do they intersect? Let's talk about how do Docker and Cloud Foundry intersect. So let me just give a very brief overview of Cloud Foundry service broker architecture. So Cloud Foundry definitely it is a platform to run your apps, but it's also a platform to run your services. Now for every service, there is a service backend, and there is a service broker, which actually orchestrates the interaction between the backend and uh, the end users. So once you say that I want to create a service on top of Cloud Foundry, Cloud Controller fetches the catalog of services from service broker, provisions the service, but provisioning is not the only thing, right? We need to bind services. So under the covers, it actually binds your service instances to your different applications. So this is the life cycle of a service within Cloud Foundry. Now what the community has done, they've created a Docker service broker for Cloud Foundry, which actually allows you to spin up Docker containers and then have services on them, which can then be brokered within a Cloud Foundry environment. So Docker Service Broker actually allows you, gives you a service catalog of different services which are running on containers. It can provision services, unprovision them, bind them to an application, 
unbind. So all the lifecycle operations of a service broker are supported by this. So that's one piece of the work which is done uh, with respect to Docker and Cloud Foundry. There are others. There is Project Diago, which is actually rewriting a lot of the Cloud Foundry runtime to support Docker. So this is happening to alleviate some of the concerns. If you need more details, I can definitely talk about this later indeed. OK, so we talked about Cloud Foundry. You know, uh, so how do OpenStack and Cloud Foundry intersect? So there is a tool called Bosch, which is a lifecycle management tool for Cloud Foundry. And it actually helps deploying Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack. How do they all come together? So what's possible now when we take a look at the landscape of Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, and Docker? Well, Bosch can deploy Cloud Foundry on OpenStack, and it can also provision a Docker service broker, which can in turn run on OpenStack. And this Docker service broker can actually provision services in Docker containers, which are again running on OpenStack. So this is something which is available today. What's coming? As I talked about Project Diago, which is a rewrite of the Cloud Foundry runtime to move from Warden containers and supporting Docker containers, that's something which is coming. So that means all the apps, they can run on top of Docker containers within this landscape. And finally, what can be future? So there can be a Docker cloud provider interface written for Bosch, where all the Cloud Foundry management con components, be it router, UA, cloud controller, et cetera, they can be provisioned inside of Docker containers, which is running on OpenStack, and then services using a Docker service broker, again running on OpenStack, can be provisioned inside uh, Docker containers. So this is something which I wanted to cover about Cloud Foundry, OpenStack, and Docker, and how do they all intersect, and what's happening in this landscape. If you need more details, I'll be posting these slides, and you can contact me at my Twitter handle, at the rate animation. Thanks.